Hello, 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 my beloveds. So we are entering a new Mercury retro. I know you're all excited. I know every single one of you just groaned probably for the most part, right? <laughs> We're gonna hit that Mer uh, Mercury retro from March 5th through the 28th of this month. Now also in the middle of that is that full moon uh, spring equinox on the 21st, which is gonna be the most powerful thing ever for activation. So just know that. Uh, again, I will do a huge batch of Ormus for that. Hit me on the links if you need information. Moving on. I put this video out uh, during another Mercury Retro. I think it still holds water. I think it's still a really good video. So I'm very happy to kind of re-put it out there now because very few people have seen it. When we go Mercury Retro, we have to understand our shadow is a little bit more direct. So anything you have put on a shelf, anything that you have not been authentic about, not only as these energies climb, we can't take that stuff with us. We know, we know we have to release trauma, karma, all that stuff. But during Mercury retros, it's a really, really important time to regroup, reconsider, reevaluate where you're at. Uh, make sure that you're not putting yourself in situations that you know probably are going to not be in your best and highest good. So this is avoiding people that you really have major issues with that you haven't dealt with. Because here's the thing, during Mercury retro, you're not going to be able to not deal with those issues. So it's very, very easy for misunderstandings to occur, for people to say things in the heat of the moment that they don't necessarily mean, that maybe just wasn't said the right way. They might mean, but it just wasn't said in the way that would have done the best and highest good for everybody. It's very easy during this time to have two people staring at a number. One sees a six, one sees a nine. Who's right and who's wrong? Well, here's newsflash. They're both right. From their perspective, they are both right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's a really good time to take this uh, energy and just sit with it. And if you have a misunderstanding, really try and see the other person's point of view. We cannot understand what somebody else has been through until we walk in their shoes. And so usually when you are empathic and you can see somebody else's point of view, you're like, oh, wow, I get it now, right? However, we all know through the law of attraction, we understand that when we put something out there, that's what we're going to attract to us. And so a lot of people will say something during Mercury Retro and then they're like, uh-oh, and they're expecting this backlash, right? Know that if you have been authentic to yourself, that is okay. And you're supposed to say those things. It's, it's, it, you, it's a time to get that stuff off your chest and do what you need to do for you in those situations. So we might look a little crazy during this time, but just do the best that you can. Avoid toxic situations. Let's get on with the video. I hope you like it. I'll catch you guys on the rebound. So very much love to you all. I think I just remembered something. I think I left the farts it running. Now my words are filling up the tub. Get out the minute You notice all your fingers pruning up I'm tired of being careful Tiptoe Trying to keep the water warm Let me under your skin Oh, oh there it goes I sense too much it overflowed Why do I always spill? I never spoke Now I gotta wash my mouth out with soap I feel it coming out my throat Guess I better wash my mouth Throat. 
so bad God, I wish I never spoke Now I gotta wash my mouth out with soap I would just like it for the record to show that every time I try to do anything, here comes these animals. Like, you've got a cat head right in front of Look. <laughs> oh, man. And then, it, like, look at this. So it's not only my cat. She's like, what's, look at her. She's like, what's happening? <laughs> but look, I got this, this nut job right here. Leo. She's like, what's up? I want in there. I want in there. I can't do anything without these two, like, coming out of the woodwork. And the, the ferret comes out, too, sometimes. He's like, I want to be involved, too. You guys, I'm trying to work. Seriously. How am I supposed to work with you guys sitting here? Like, Desi, you're really... <laughs> you're kind of in the way. I don't mean to be... I don't mean to be rude. I'm just... I'm just saying... I think you're gonna have to move. Look at her, she's like <laughs> I think you're gonna have to move. I need I need to work a little bit, and I don't think I can do it with you sitting right there. You're not really gonna like sit down right there, are you? <laughs> she's looking like she's gonna get comfortable. I don't I know. This is not the place to get comfortable. I can put you somewhere else. Oh, what do you want? You want out? Why do you want out? Like, you're just peeing from out. Oh, my goodness. These animals, I tell you. Okay. Hey, everyone. It has been a crazy day. Oh, my gosh. So, I'm hiding. Can you tell? Like, I'm under my hood. I still have my love shirt on, though. Well, I always got the wrong side. Look. See? So bad with spatial perception. Like, seriously. <laughs> right? But here's my point. Okay. So, sorry. All right. I don't even know what to say. Today, today started out insane. Like people are, people are losing their shit a little bit. Like that's just the, sorry, that's just the truth. Like I called this, I said people were gonna have a harder and harder, harder time as these frequencies, you know, uh, as we all are. I mean, all of us are. Nobody's getting out of this without seeing the blues. That's the way I look at it. Nobody. 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 Everybody is going through some sort of a process with this, whether consciously or not. Let me just put it that way. But let me just, uh, let me just give you the beginning of my day. So I woke up at 6 o'clock a.m. so that I could get a start on the day. Um, I just had this weird, I went to bed really early last night. The energies have been really, really intense. Uh, so there's been a lot of physical process with that. So, uh, I've been a little tired, more tired than usual. A lot of visual things that aren't normally, um, in my perception that are happening a lot of, um, I'm not really having a huge amount of ear ringing more than the normal. My ear ringing is very, um, standard at this point. I wouldn't say it's it's in excess now than it normally is, but I've heard that from a lot of other people, that a lot of other people all of a sudden are experiencing this ear ringing on a level that they were not used to, and that's really driving them a little nutty. Uh, so just know that if that is a symptom for you, that you're not alone. A lot of people are experiencing that. A lot of people are experiencing digestive issues really bad. Um, I've heard a lot of that from people. Uh, rashes, skin eruptions, 
um, that feeling like uh, something's kind of at the top of your head. Um, that's how do I explain that? That like there's an energy at the top of your head. A lot of people are experiencing that. A lot of people are experiencing when they close their eyes that they're continuing to see visuals even though their eyes are closed. Um, a lot of times in geometric uh, form, a lot of people are explaining that they're seeing that now. That's very, very, very normal for this part. Um, what else? A lot of people are having some itching issues, uh, and, and all of that is very, very normal. As, as this biokinetic kind of network, this crystalline process is, is starting to take shape, uh, it happens under your skin in this weird way. I have shown what this looks like under your skin with filters uh, so that you can see it's an actual biokinetic computer kind of. It's a very, I mean, I don't know guys. I'm looking for the answers with all of you. I've developed a hypothesis by this, by the way, or a theory on this. Um, I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, but just know that if you're having lots of physical experiences right now or physical symptoms right now, a lot of aches and pains, a lot of people are having joint pain, knee pain, a shoulder pain, a lot of shoulder pain for a lot of people. Um, it's almost like growing pains when we were teenagers or when we were younger. A lot of people are experiencing that again. Some people are experiencing the mouth and the teeth. The teeth ache. A lot of people will get that teeth kind of just achy feeling. Um, it's very normal. And what else? I feel like I'm missing a few things. But those are those are some really big ones right now. So just know that if you're experiencing dizziness, uh, that feeling of okay, here's a here's one at late for me between like the 12 and 3 o'clock hour, sometimes I'll wake up at 3, so maybe even till the 4 o'clock a.m. hour, a.m., I will experience this feeling of almost floating up outside of my body. Uh, it's this like rising up feeling, and I used to be very scared of that. I used to like freak out and like pull myself back in really quick and be like, <gasps> where the fuck am I going, right? <laughs> And there's nobody around that's going with me. What's happening? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not ready, right? I used to do that all the time. But now I don't do that anymore. Now I stop myself and I go, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Where Where is this leading to? As long as I stay attached to myself, and each person's going to have to figure out how to do that in their own way. You can hear my dog clicky clacking. Hello, Leo. Say, say hello. What, where's your head? Say I can't. I'm so bad with spatial perception. Like, I can't. Hi. Anyways, that's my dog, Leo. He's obviously going through this process. Look at his poor bald. Look. Look. Yeah. <laughs> my baby. Um, they haven't really figured out what the deal is with that. It could be a food allergy. We're still looking into that. But here's the thing. Whatever's happening to me is happening to him. Like, he exhibits the same exact symptoms that I exhibit. It's really insane. Um, it's really insane. Like the whole summer that I went through the itching at night, he was itching right along with me. Um, it's really crazy. And here's a really funny thing is that I heard about a monk who actually, when he ascended with his rainbow body, he took his dog with him. His dog actually went through the same exact process. Like, I now always said from the beginning, whatever's happening, I'm taking my dog with me. Like, he can't be left alone. He's really needy. He's really, <laughs> he's needy. It's my fault. I carried him around in my shirt uh, when he was really little, so it's probably my fault. We probably bonded a little too much. But, you know, I said, whatever's happening, I'm taking my dog with me. So, moving on from that. Uh, oh, there's a ladybug that just jumped on my screen. Oh, you're back. This is the same ladybug that I'm like, it's been chasing me around the house all night. Hold on. Let me see if I can find him. Here, want to crawl on again? Yeah, he's really friendly. Come here. Come on. I know. You can't be on my screen. Wait, where are you? Quit moving. I can't. There you go. Do you see him? There he is. Ah, there he flew. Where'd he go? I don't know. He flew off. Okay. Anyways, he's been following me around all night, so that's kind of funny. Um, I literally tried to take him outside, and he wouldn't get off of me. He was like, please don't abandon me out here. It's raining. I don't even know where I'm at. Take me back in. But I'm like, if I take you back in, you're going to die in the house at some point. So don't make that be on my conscience. I can't handle it. Just say. Okay. So I want to just tell you about the beginning of my morning. I got totally off track. Sorry. It's been, it's crazy though right now, you guys. Like, it's so, oh my gosh, it's so crazy. It's so crazy right now. 
So this morning started uh, at 6 a.m. I got up early. I thought I'm going to actually, uh, the one day out of the month, I actually go, it's my busiest day. I go what I call big grocery shopping, uh, which is I, it's the cheapest way for me to feed my growing teenage boys. So I go, we don't have like a giant supersized Walmart in our town. It's kind of weird. Um, even though we have a pretty big town, it's just, they, they, I don't know. They've been really weird about it. They haven't allowed it. Let me just put it that way. Uh, so we go 30 minutes away. I take my mom and, and cause I need somebody to push a second cart for me so I can load up with all this stuff once a month. Cause it's just the cheapest way. Otherwise I spend three times my budget because the stores that we have around here are just too expensive. And I just, I just can't do that. So I have a big back freezer. And so this is my big day. Normally I would never even do a video on a day like today, but it just, it is what it is. I have to, I just have to, if I had this experience this morning, my point is there are so many other people that are having crazier experiences. So I felt like it would be wrong of me not to come forward and say, oh my God, you guys are right. It's, it's nuts out there. At least you can relate to my experience maybe. So at six o'clock I got up. I went to take, um, excuse me, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, I went to take my recycling and my garbage out because it's that day. And uh, we're talking 6, 6.30 a.m., right? And all of a sudden I hear one of my neighbors screaming, like literally yelling. I'm four houses and a goalie. No, I'm sorry, I'm two houses, but a goalie in between us and half a block between us away from him. And I could still hear him. I'm so sorry. Uh, Leo, stop it. There's nothing out there right now. At the top of my lungs, excuse me, halt. Okay, sorry. Anyways, so um, anyways, I was taking my stuff out, and then I start hearing this yelling, and I'm hearing the f bomb, like the f bombs being yelled through a neighborhood at 6 a.m. And I'm just like, what the heck is going on? Right. So I'm looking around, and I'm like, I swear that's my one neighbor who's really cool, uh, but I could just hear like f bomb after gd and and ah, and this yelling and i'm like what is happening right now this is 6 a.m in the morning like what am i and of course you look around like for anybody else to be looking at you another human being to make contact with at that point be like are you hearing this am i tripping the f out or is this really happening right now right and of course there's nobody there and you're just like right <laughs> you know what I mean? Do. So anyways, uh, he's a, I hear a few key statements, uh, something about not being able to transfer some files, uh, but that uh, he wanted to clean his apartment that day, F this, F that, God damn it, blah, 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 blah. And then I see him proceed to, to, to cycle by me, he's on a bike, uh, in a few minutes, and he, he literally yells when he gets to the end of the street. F this, blah, you know, and I'm just like, oh my God, it's like, what? And again, I'm looking around like nobody else, nobody else is witnessing this. No, okay, fine, whatever. So I'm like, whatever, crazy. Go back to, go back to uh, what I'm doing. I actually threw a video together and put it out. Um, I just have had so many people, so many people contact me in just the last week or two and just say how hard they are struggling, especially light workers. I mean, I hate to put labels on it and I don't even like the term light worker necessarily, but that seems to be the consensus of what we all are. Uh, but so many people who are, let's just say, have a higher awareness or in this front runner category or in the awakening category have reached out to me within the last week or two and they're just really frustrated. They're really struggling. Everybody's got every single person just know all of you every single person has some situation that is just grinding on them right now in a ridiculous way I, I don't know what that is for you personally everybody has a different situation mine one of what a big one I have several honestly a big one of mine is my love life uh, but these are all things that that needed tweaking to put it in the nicest possible way um, a long time ago and there are things that maybe I didn't address that I should have addressed uh, and some things are just cycles that that needed to happen now like my one son is turning 18 uh, and so that's just a cycle that's coming to fruition you know I mean that was always going to happen at this time it's, it's not you know but everything's so much more intense right now so there are, there's a lot of legal, legal actual things that I have to redo right now so that's I hate legal stuff oh my gosh but, uh, so anyways, I go back in the house and throw together a video and then I'm just like, I, go to, I don't even know how to start this. So I go to leave 
and uh, my dog's acting a little crazier than normal. He's barking at something out the window, and, and as you heard, he's always barking at something, but this was, there's a more aggressive tone to it. He was, he was definitely acting different. Um, more like just aggressive and timid, uh, not timid, but scared. He gets a little, he gets a little scared sometimes. So when he does that, he gets more aggressive than normal. Um, and so there was this car that was sitting kind of haphazardly. It wasn't really in the neighbor's driveway, but it was kind of in the middle of the road. And I started to notice, I looked out and I could see that this guy was, was acting very like, I, I'm, I'm just going to say it. He was acting fucked up in a way that I've not seen except for on cops or uh, like I like I've not seen that in person before it was actually quite scary um, he was flailing I actually thought he was having a seizure at first is my first my first instinct because he was flailing like flailing in the car like arms the the driver's side window was down and the arms were flailing and he actually was punching himself in the face at one point um, like literally punching himself in the face and he was screaming something that wasn't even coherent it was like a gutterish a guttural um just it was nonsensical it just like a guttural kind of scream like ah you know but he was like hitting the steering wheel and then hitting himself in the face and then it looked like he would pass out for for a minute or two and then he would start the whole thing all over again and, and initially i thought he was having a seizure uh, my next my next thought process was that he might be an autistic uh, who had tried their GPS and their GPS had led them the wrong way and so they were actually having a meltdown because it was people don't I, I'm in the medical field or I had been for many years and, and people don't generally have a seizure on top of a seizure that's that's not how it works usually especially with a grand mal seizure usually you would have one giant seizure and then you would be down for for a half an hour or, and you know you would your body takes time to recuperate from that you don't generally uh, there can be exceptions to that, but you generally don't go into a seizure on top of a seizure. So I started to think that maybe this was some sort of a behavioral thing. And so I didn't know what to do because I was supposed to leave my house right then uh, to do this big grocery shopping day with my mom. And I didn't, and, and you don't make, you don't make my mom wait. Like out of everybody in my world, you don't make my mom wait because she's going to make you pay for that shit. She's a Scorpio and they do not wait and they will kill you. They will kill you, and they will dig you back up, and they will kill you again if you make them wait. I'm just saying. And then they might banish you for forever. Uh, just, just kidding. But they really don't like you to wait. So, anyways, uh, I wasn't in the. I was like, I don't know what to do with this, but I felt very uncomfortable leaving with this person parked right across the street from me like that, and and he was still obviously in in huge distress. So I drove the other way, and then I turned around, and I come back, and I stopped my car, and then I actually was like, I have to do something. And of course, where the is anybody else again there's nobody else in the neighborhood to ask anything to there's just out of all these houses and all these people all of a sudden and people walk around all the time nobody's around and i'm just like great it's up to me superwoman again great fabulous okay so i go up and i, t I touch his sleeve because the window like i said the driver's window is completely down and it looked like he was in one of those moments of being passed out his head was down and he was kind of he was he was inanimate at that hob at that moment let me put it that way he was flailing and screaming and so I touched his sleeve and he turned around and he looked at me and I just, it's a little PTSD for me. I actually just burst into tears, honestly, um, a little bit because he was, uh, he's, he's an old acquaintance. He's a, he's a neighbor and he's an old acquaintance of mine. I, and you know, I don't want to begrudge his privacy, but, um, he was obviously in a state of unwell, um, uh, I believe it looked like. I'm just going to guess due to, to a very heavy drug issue. Um, it was bad. It was really, really, really bad. Like, it was so bad. And my initial thought was, he's inches away from death, is what my initial thought was. And then my, and I hadn't seen him for so long. It's been a few years that it was very shocking to see him in that state. And then my next thought was, um, oh my God, he was driving like this. Like he literally had parked there because he thought he was, he's supposed to be two houses down, but he had thought he was in his driveway and he had passed out or was in this psychosis of some kind. Um, and it was just the saddest thing to me because I, there's so many people 
You know, that was two of my neighbors tripping the F out by 10 a.m. That's my point, though. You know, and I live in a very, 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 very quiet neighborhood. So this is so abnormal to have one of these incidents, let alone two, by 10 a.m. You know, uh, that the one neighbor in the car did end up needing, I think, some sort of intervention, medical intervention by early afternoon. Uh, there were some people that came in, and I think uh, that situation was dealt with. But my point is that uh, the divine masculine right now is having a little bit of a tougher time than divine feminine. That is true. Uh, just because the divine feminine, this energy is very nurturing. It's very, it's very feministic. This is what this energy coming in is kind of grounding us into because it was lopsided. It was this masculine energy for all this time. And so everybody got hyper into the masculine. And so now it's kind of starting to balance out. But the women have it a little bit easier because we have those traits already. Um, it's a lot easier as, for us to kind of, we had to become hyper-masculine to just kind of stay in the game. Does that make sense to anybody? Did, I, have a, I feel like a lot of women right now are shaking their head like, oh my God, yeah, you just put that in words. And I wasn't sure how to describe that. But yeah, um, we, we didn't have a choice. You know, that's just the way, that's the only way we're going to survive in the game. And so a lot of women did that. And so now we have to come back to this place where every the whole planet is getting empathy, which is a gen, generally a more feministic, you know, I hate to put a label on it, so don't take it the wrong way. But that's generally a more feminine attribute. And so as we do that, a lot of men are, are struggling with trying to integrate that in energy uh, because it creates a little bit of all my, like I said this a couple, you know, a couple months ago in one of my hand uh, updates, I talk about this. It's a little bit like, you know, all the men are getting a little bit of a PMS, a little bit of PMS all of a sudden, these wild mood swings, where if you don't hold on to that emotion and you get triggered by it, that will take you down so fast, so fast. The littlest molehill will just become like, you know, it's going to become like Hiroshima. It's going to be a mess. So you have to be really careful about not getting triggered right now. And I mean, I, it's not like I'm exempt to this. I, I've been triggered in the last week or so quite a bit, quite a bit. Like I said, everybody's got these giant situations that are closing in a little bit like claustrophobia. I put this video out um, today. I want to say something about my blood, you know, um, it's not in my blood or something, but and it's a lot about these walls are closing in on me. And a lot of people feel like that right now with many different situations, uh, whether that's financial uh, partners, uh, as far as romantic partners, uh, or children issues, or spouse issues, uh, work issues, just geographical where you're living issues. A lot of people are just experiencing so many different giant rocks, like kind of hitting them in the head like a boulder. And it's just, we, it's just an unfortunate part of the process. I mean, that's just the truth. We all have to go through these, these parts to, to get them out of the way so we can address whatever's left. We're, we're here, and here's the good news, though. Here's the good news. We're, we're at, like, level, I mean, I, you can't really do put a level on it, you know what I mean? It's a very linear way of looking at things. But just so we can put it in linear terms for people, we're, like, at 7 out of 8 is what it feels like for me, or 7 out of 10, at least. Maybe 7 out of 10, not 8. But we're close, is my point. We've done the bulk of the hard work. It's what it really feels like to me is that so many of us have done the bulk of the hard work that we've we've worked through a lot of the really icky parts and so this is just kind of you know it's just another stage where you have to purge and cleanse again a lot of people are getting sore throats um, or it just feels like your throat's really dry you can't quite get enough water um, that is just because our throat chakras are really starting to open up even more now my throat chakra was always my dominant chakra so it was never really an issue for me, but even I am starting to experience that a little bit. And I hadn't had that coughing up stage for a really long time. And so I'm just, uh, went through that again for another week or so. Um, because you just, everything that's in there, you got to get out, you know, and we all have had, I mean, it's a, it's daily. We're being hit on daily. So many of us. And when you awaken my dog's back, so I'm sorry, I'm petting him in my lap. Um, but you know, when, when you awaken in this process, you become more visible. It's almost like, I swear, it's almost like this little alarm goes off and it's like, rah, 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 you know, and then there's like a bunch of people in this room that go, oh, another one's awake. Who's going to take this one? Right. Right. 
<laughs> just say. Uh, and so, you know, it's almost like I swear you get handed this handler and they, and then they, they try and, and they try and take you out. I put a video out the other day about Legion and parasitic attachment. And it's, an, I, I discussed this in there a little bit. It's almost like, you know, um, they try and take you out because they, if you commit suicide or if you go insane, their job is done. Right. And then they get a free vessel on top of it. Right. And that's, and that's the truth. I mean, I hate to say it, but that is the truth. There is a, the, the war was never quite what people thought it was. It's more of a war for our consciousness. I mean, that's really kind of what it comes down to. Um, but it's so easy to bypass. It's so easy to bypass. It doesn't have to be all that. It doesn't, as, as long as you're aware and you empower yourself, you bypass so much of that. Um, but it doesn't mean that they won't come in other ways. They'll cut, you know, a lot of people are technology issues. Uh, so computer issues or anything that will frustrate you and they can go through technology very easily. They can go through electricity very easily. So if you're, you know, you get frustrated because all of a sudden your computer won't do what you want it to do, or your lights aren't functioning the way that they should, or your car is not functioning, or, um, you know, your laptop or your phone or any of those issues, uh, electronics is a very easy manipulation for them. And then they also will go through unconscious people. So you'll think that you're absolutely fine with somebody in your, your physical world. And all of a sudden somebody will come at you out of nowhere. And you're just like, what is wrong with you right now? Why are you acting this way? And they won't even know why they're acting that way, but it's because they're not, they're not aware yet. And so they're very easily uh, vulnerable in that respect to be gone through. Does that make sense to people? Um, so just know that. And so people are having a little bit of an issue with that right now. It's, and it's getting really, really intense, like I said. So the people before that I would say would be, if we're going to just classify it to make it easy, uh, very 3D thinking people, very linear thinking people, people who hadn't really started to look at this process yet, they're all starting to be affected by it though. It was that they weren't really, they weren't acknowledging they were affected by it and they could kind of keep it on the, you know what I mean, rationalize it away with any kind of whatever they want to. But now things are happening at such a ridiculous level. Like they can't rationalize it away. Like it's just, it's becoming too seen uh, in their environment that they have to address it, whatever that is for them. Uh, like I said, everybody's got something different. So it's just becoming glaringly obvious let me put it that way that there's a lot of chaos in the collective right now and so the all these things are coming true you know what I was told a very very long time ago all these things are starting to come true and it's you know you will be the you'll be the calm in the storm that's the job uh, and I didn't understand that necessarily at the time but each day I'm starting to understand it a little bit more does that make sense um, we can very easily get wrapped up into this negativity. We can very easily get wrapped up into the being triggered by whatever that is. And then you have to feel what you have to feel. Now, don't go into that where you just bypass feeling the crap that you need to feel. I mean, everybody has to feel. There's a reason when something comes up and you do allow yourself to get triggered, there's a reason for that is what I would say. So you need to feel into it, but don't get stuck there. You need to examine, I would say, observe before you react. So see what the what's happening. Look at every angle of it. And before you freak out, right? Because once you freak out, it's a lot harder to come back from that. Before you freak out, just examine it. And then be and if you can, be like, okay, but feel what you need to feel. I mean, if you gotta get angry and you gotta put some boundaries down, you got you put your foot up somebody's ass. Sometimes that's what the situation calls for. And love has a lot of different facets. Now, love is not being a doormat all the time. Let's be real clear about that. Sometimes love is tough love. That is part of the deal. Sometimes love it is being tough. Sometimes love is, is withholding. Sometimes, you know, love is, is encompassing a porcupine a little bit. But there's each situation is different. And so just be, be authentic and true to yourself. And as long as you're true to yourself and you're not taking a bunch of crap from somebody, but you are being loving and unconditionally loving and compassionate and honest uh, in the best way that you can be, things should be fine. But, you know, like I said, sometimes love is tough love. So it doesn't mean being, being you know, walked all over. But people are going to be a lot more triggered. And here's the problem. This is going to stack up and it's going to get more intense and more intense 
and more intense and more intense. So this is not going to go backwards at any point. We might stop for just just a second to catch our breath, but even now we're not really doing that. You know, a year ago it would be like you get one of these waves and then you'd have a couple months to adjust, and then you get another wave. But now it's like wave and then wave and then wave and then sometimes you get a wave in a wave in a wave and you're like, what the? I can't hold on. This is crazy. What's going on? So you know, just do the best you can, but just. Be really acutely observant of your surroundings, I would say, because it is a little bit of, I mean, I don't want to put fear on anybody, so don't go that way with it, but just be aware that it is a little bit of a dangerous time, just in that people are going to be very unpredictable right now. Um, people who are not used to dealing with these emotions are being bombarded with them, uh, and they're going to have to deal with stuff that they have tried to keep on a shelf, and all that stuff is going to be like a ball. It's kind of like trying to keep a ball under the water. It never stays under the water. It's going to come up and hit you in the face. And so right now, a lot of people uh, who try to keep a lot of balls under the water, it's coming up and hitting them in the face. And so some of those people, unfortunately, it's like somebody who's drowning. They will climb on top of you and drown you just to get out. So be very clear about your boundaries um, and be very clear about what you need for you. And it's okay to say, I can't be in your space right now. That's totally okay right now. It's more okay now than it's ever been. You know what I mean? People are all on edge. People are all needing time and space. A lot of people just need extra sleep. And here's a big part of it is a lot of people who are just stuck in that trying to survive. And so they're working every hour right now. A lot of those people are having a, one of the hardest times. And it's it's so not fair almost. I see so many of those people who are just, I mean, and I get it. I totally get it. Um, that are struggling because they don't have the time to sleep in if they need extra sleep. They can't take that time to, to meditate. They can't take that time to have uh, time to just think about what it is that they need. They're really struggling with that because they literally are working every hour just to put money in the bank so they can feed their kids or they can, there's a lot of people struggling right now with that specific point. Um, and I don't know an answer for that. I, I've been struggling with trying to find an answer for that for some people and I don't, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. You know, I'm struggling with that financial aspect myself. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a tough one. Uh, I do believe something's on its way, though. I do. I hope. I mean, I look at this way. I look at, you know, keep doing what you need to do in your real life every day, 3D, to make sure that you take care of your shit, right? But be hopefully optimistic. Um, and maybe a little bit more than hopefully optimistic. Be like, plotting for it, you know what I mean, on the on the side. That's the way I would put it, you know, because everybody's talking about the event, and oh my gosh, and what if it doesn't show up, and you have to plan that's never going to show up. That's the way we have to live our life, unfortunately. We have to just be realistic about some shit, and be like, it, is pro it could very never ever possibly show up, but I want to believe that it will, you know what I mean? I want to believe that there's more, I want to believe that there's better, and I never thought that it would be sparkly. You know, I wouldn't have this crystalline DNA process. I mean, it's, it's insane to even say that. Like, it's insane to even say that. But I never thought that I would be able to change my pupil shape on command, which I can do anytime I want now. Like, all I can do is look in the mirror. I mean, I could probably even do it without looking in the mirror, but I only know I'm doing it if I'm looking in the mirror. So it's kind of a catch 22. But you know what I mean? I mean, there. I never thought that these weird things would be happening. And they are. So if, in my mind, if that's happening, then there's possibility for something incredible happening. And so I'd like to I'd like to believe that. So I'm gonna leave it with that tonight. Um, there's so many more that I wanted to talk about, but it's been a really long day and I'm just hoping no more neighbors freak out. I'm just kidding. No, I'm actually not kidding. Like I can't. I just need to go to sleep. It's been a long day. No more mess, no more mess. Um, but no, just everybody hang in there and just know that you're doing the best that you can. And if um, the whole point with the, the video at the very beginning is that, you know, a lot of times people are saying things now that it, it, people are misinterpreting because everybody's so trigger sensitive. Everybody's hypersensitive. So the whole point about that is God knows I put my foot in my mouth a, a million times probably. Uh, just try not look past what people are saying because a lot of people are even fumbling words right now and look towards the intention because you can pick up on the energy of what somebody's saying, uh, especially my viewers for sure. And so try not to get 
uh, trigger sensitive on words. Try to look uh, towards the intention and most likely 99.9% .9 of the time you probably just took that the wrong way and nobody probably meant to offend you. Um, so just try and be careful about that and try to be extra compassionate, extra loving, and extra um, honest. I think honesty is the best policy right now for everybody. I think if we're all honest, it's going to go a really, really, really long way. Um, even if you look like a dork, sometimes honest is just the best policy. So I'm just going to leave you all with that. I'll catch you guys on the rebound. Have a beautiful night uh, until I see you next time. So as we close out, I just want you guys to remember, just because it's Mercury retrograde does not mean that we have to allow this to kind of uncenter us and unbalance us. Those of us that have the higher vibration, it's really important that we try to maintain that through this period. Just remember that communication can be a problem. There can be delays in things. Sometimes there can be misunderstandings and sometimes things just don't come out the way that you wanted them to. My mom always had a really great uh, message with my dad that when they're still married 50 years this year in August, big one. But um, when he would do some things that maybe we would call black moods back in the day, uh, he had fought in Vietnam, so a lot of those guys came back with those. However, sometimes he would get a little bit aggressive in the way that he got things across. And my mom would say to him, you are not going to let those girls go to bed without apologizing. And I agree. Sometimes we can miscommunicate. Sometimes you have to ask yourself if you're just being a dick. Fair statement. So if you are, get back up, apologize, and make sure that person knows you still love them and you just didn't necessarily get your message out the correct way. Uh, and then let them know, uh, let Mercury Retrograde know, you hit like a bitch a little bit. Get back up, take those shots, and flip it and use this for your best and highest good. I love you all. I uh, can keep committing those random acts of kindness. Give somebody a hug right now that really needs it. So many people do. I'll catch you guys on the rebound. Think I just remembered something. I think I left the fart set running. Now my words are filling up the top. Darling, you're just soaking in it. But I know you'll get out the minute. You notice all your fingers pruning up. I'm tired of being careful, tiptoe, trying to keep the water warm. Let me under your skin. Oh, oh there it goes. I sent too much, it overflowed. What do I always spill? I feel it coming on my throat. Guess I better wash my mouth. God, I wish I never spoke Now I gotta wash my mouth out with soap I feel it coming out my throat Guess I better wash my mouth out with soap God, I wish I never